Hi everyone, welcome back to the Indoor Garden Series. I hope you're having as much fun as I am growing some fresh, tasty vegetables inside this winter. For a lot of you, I know it's way too cold to grow outside. How much fun is it to grow our lettuce? Our tiny tim tomatoes are looking really good. We've got some herbs also going and some microgreens. Now, one thing that is challenging for a lot of people growing inside is pests. Sometimes you get little aphids or fungus gnats flying around inside and you don't know what to do. Well, no worries. Today, I've got you covered. We're gonna cover how to control pests organically indoors using three simple methods. Some common pests that you might find in your indoor garden are aphids and fungus gnats. Now, unfortunately, I do have some aphids over here on my dill plant. And let me just show you what they look like. If you have aphids in your outdoor garden, you probably already know, but they're teeny tiny little insects that crawl on the stems and in the soil of your plant, and they can just suck the life out of your plant. And you also might have fungus gnats, which are those little fruit flies that you see flying around that are so annoying every time you bump your plant. Don't have any fungus gnats today, so really lucky on that one. But one thing why indoor pest control can be so challenging is because there's no natural predators inside to control them naturally. One thing about pest control, especially indoors, is you want to try and prevent an infestation before it happens. So today we're going to talk about preventative measures and also how to handle an infestation. I'm going to take this dill over to the sink, but on the way there, I want to show you guys how good the Tiny Tim tomatoes are doing. These ones I've actually had growing in my grow light closet. It's nice and toasty warm in there and they are doing absolutely beautifully. In fact, these are actually doing better than the ones back on the shelf over here because they're in a warmer location. So if yours are growing slow, get them in a warmer location and the growth will pick up in no time. So make sure you subscribe because we're definitely going to be coming back to doing an update video on the Tiny Tims. When you have an infestation like I do on this dill plant, the first thing you wanna do is rinse the pests off with a nice spray of water from your sink. Now I know I usually say don't get the leaves of your plants wet, but I'm making an exception in this case because you gotta take the lesser of two evils. I definitely don't want pests on my plant and we've got to get rid of them. So what I'm gonna do is just turn my sink on here and kinda of tip my plant over sideways and just sort of gently Kind of rinse the pests off here the best that you can. Might get a little messy if you spill soil into your sink, but don't worry about it. And your plant definitely might look a little floppy after this, but it's gonna bounce back in no time. It is important that you check your plants daily because a lot of times you can prevent an infestation before it occurs. And if, as long as the infestation isn't too bad, a little rinse of water a couple of days in a row should take care of it. You might not need anything else. Now, keeping it real here, guys, plants don't always look perfect in my garden. Things happen. I had a really busy week and this basil plant is just got neglected and is looking pretty shabby. It's got, uh, some aphids in here as well. I did rinse it off earlier in the week, but it's just gotten the best of me. So what I'm gonna do with this plant is prune off the damage and we're gonna treat it for pests and then hope for some brand new growth. But I will definitely be planting some more basil seeds to get a fresh new crop. Let's take all the dead leaves off. We'll get it a give it a nice new feeding and we should be seeing some new growth. And then just to let you know guys here, the microgreens, we've already harvested all of these and you can usually get about two crops out of your microgreens. Um, your, your second crop won't be as lush as your first crop, but then after that you can add some fresh new soil and start some new seeds. If you haven't yet started your indoor garden, now's the time. You're gonna to wanna to get your indoor plants growing. Well, it's cold to grow outside and my indoor garden seed collection makes it really simple. So go back and watch the video series from the beginning and head over to calikimgardenandhome.com. We've got the indoor garden seed collection over there, plus the Calikim one gallon bright colored smart pots. You're gonna love having this pop of color inside. And right now I do have a sale going. Use the code 2021 to get 20% off through January 11th, 2021. The first way to control pests in your indoor garden is with a neem oil. Now, a lot of you followed along this summer as we use neem oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil in the outdoor garden. It works inside too, but you'll just be making it in much smaller quantities. So I like to make it in a small 12 ounce spray bottle. Um, you can use a 32 ounce spray bottle if you want, but make it in a very small quantity because obviously you're not gonna be using as much on your indoor garden. Now neem oil is especially effective for aphids and fungus gnats. 
It actually um, interrupts their life cycle. It's really good at controlling the chewing and sucking insects. But one component that you want to make sure that you have in your neem oil, you want it to be cold pressed neem oil with azadiractin. That's the component in the neem oil that does control the chewing and sucking insects. And I always get mine over at therustedgarden.com so you can grab some and mix yourself up a little spray bottle. Now for a 12 ounce, what you're gonna need is a half a teaspoon of neem oil. And let me just shake this up a little bit. Neem oil, when it's stored, you know, when it's a little bit colder, does tend to solidify just a little bit. So give it a good shake. And then for a 12 ounce bottle, you're gonna need a half a teaspoon see how it's a little bit on the thick side there. We're going to pour it in our spray bottle. And once we shake it up in here, it's going to disperse through the water. And then I'm also going to use peppermint oil. I also get this over at the Rusted Garden. And I do like to use peppermint oil because the pests don't like the smell. So they smell that and then they go somewhere else. So for 12 ounces, you're going to need about 15 drops. It's a little bit less than 1 eighth of a teaspoon. Then I also like to use rosemary oil for the same reason. The pests don't like the smell and then they go somewhere else. And we'll do about 15 drops of the rosemary oil as well. Now if you don't have rosemary oil and peppermint oil, that's okay, but really the critical component is the neem oil. So you definitely do need to use the neem oil. So the last thing I'm gonna to add to my little organic pest control is some dish soap. And the reason why I use the dish soap is because it disperses the liquid throughout the container here. I'm just gonna put about a fourth a teaspoon or so of dish soap. And this is a natural dish soap that I got at Target. I do like to use the natural dish soaps rather than like a Dawn or something like that. I got all my ingredients in here. I'm just gonna put the lid on, give it a good shake. You can see how everything is kind of sitting at the top of the spray bottle here. And so the dish soap really helps disperse the oils throughout the container. Now what we're going to do is spray our plants with the organic pest control. However, if this is the first time that you use this on your plants, always do a test spray. Wait 24 to 48 hours to make sure there's no damage before you spray your entire plant. So what I'm going to do is spray the tops of the leaves here. Also spray underneath the leaves. You want to try and get every single surface dripping wet. And you also want to spray the soil because a lot of times the bugs are in the soil. And I also even like to spray the container because sometimes you might have bug eggs or bugs in the container. And even the bottom of your container here and the sides, anywhere where you think those little bugs might be lurking around. I'm also going to spray my basil plant here. I'm going to spray it until the leaves are dripping wet. And when you have an infestation like I do, you want to spray every three days. For prevention though, I would spray about once a week. And here my little tiny Tim tomato doesn't have any aphids on it, but I'm going to go ahead and spray it as well. This little tiny Tim is looking so amazing. It's actually about time to add some more soil to this pot. We'll definitely be doing that in another video because remember wherever the stem of a tomato plant touches the soil, it grows roots. So we've got plenty of room here to add soil and it'll make this tomato plant nice and strong. So we're also gonna spray down our Paris Cause Romaine lettuce. Can you guys believe we started this lettuce about six weeks ago on the very first video and we've actually been harvesting off it almost every single day. It is looking absolutely amazing. Now, if you are gonna be harvesting your vegetables indoors, you do wanna do that before you spray. Although you can harvest 24 hours or so after you spray your plant. All organic ingredients in this spray here, guys. And I'm telling you what, the peppermint and rosemary oil smells absolutely amazing. When you're using your neem oil spray, you do wanna use it within about 24 hours, just so it has the maximum benefit to get rid of those aphids and fun fungus gnats. Now, the second method is so easy. It's using organic raw apple cider vinegar and dish soap. And what these are is little DIY fungus gnat traps. So this is a really good one to do for prevention. You just pour the apple cider vinegar in bottle caps. This is a canning jar lid. And the fungus gnats are attracted to the smell of the apple cider vinegar. So it's really a good thing to do this when you first plant your indoor garden before you even have fungus gnats. 
That way if you do get any, they will go right to the fungus gnat traps. And then I put just a drop or so of dish soap in the bottle caps to attract the fungus gnats and then the fungus gnats will go in there and drown. Then I just place these bottle caps around my plants indoors to catch the fungus gnats. And again, make sure that you do check your garden daily because the apple cider vinegar will evaporate over time, especially if it's warm in your house and you want to refill it so you can get rid of all those little bugs. Now the third method of organic pest control is so, so easy. It's one of my very favorite ones and that is yellow sticky traps. I just started using these for the first time this year. You can grab these on Amazon. These are the cutest little things. They're shaped like butterflies. They also have some that are shaped like flowers. You peel off the sticky backing, and this is really sticky here, and then you just put these in your plants, and the fungus gnats fly right into them, and then of course they can't get off. See, it's even sticking to my finger here. But I think they look really cute, and they are super, super effective against the fungus gnats, especially that are flying around your house. The biggest thing with growing indoors is expect to have pests, expect the challenges, and don't get discouraged when it does happen. Use one of these methods or all three of these methods, either the neem oil spray, the sticky traps, or the fungus gnat traps with the apple cider vinegar, and it's sure to really help cut down on pests in your indoor garden. Well, let me know if you're growing along the indoor garden series with me. Let me know how things are going, and hang in there. Spring is just around the corner. Grab one of my indoor garden seed collections or my spring garden seed collection and use the code 2021 to get 20% off. It's been such a fun series. We're gonna come back and do some more videos in this series with the tomato plants. So make sure you subscribe and join us for those. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.